Okay, Sterling K. Brown. First of all, just huge congratulations on the incredible year that you've had. You won an Emmy for The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Yes. You're nominated again for This Is Us. I am. And you have three movies in the works. You have Marshall, you have Black Panther, you have Predator. Yeah. So my question is, do you ever just get to reflect on this incredible year? Do you get to take a step back and look at what this meant? Yeah, I do. There's time. There's, it's, there's little intermittent pockets. You know, it happens in your sleep. Like, <laughs> I, I'll think about sort of just how this whirlwind has just sort of swept up from OJ to now this is us to having three films to be able to shoot during the hiatus and it feels good like it, it you don't know if this point in your career is ever going to come you're happy to just be working but to be working consistently on things that people enjoy both critically and popularly um i'm excited yeah. Uh, and before we talk about This Is Us, I want to yeah. go back to when you win, won the Emmy for uh, People vs. O.J. Sure. What was that moment like when your category comes up and they're reading off the nominees? Do you remember or was it all a, a big blur? No, I remember. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I remember. Um, I remember saying to myself, whatever happens, Brown, celebrate. Mm -hmm. Celebrate for your castmates. I had two other castmates nominated in this. There were two other people from FX nominated, you know, and then of course there's Dr. House who was nominated too. So whoever mm -hmm. celebrate their success. When they called my name, I think like my soul jumped outside of my body and I, I almost passed out. And I remembered like you get like 45 seconds to say something. So get up there, say your words. I got a chance to kiss my wife and I remember her face like we were both looking at each other like this is this is happening. I remember hugging Cuba and I remember I wanted to walk up on stage slowly because I'd already seen many women face plant. Um, <laughs> I, thankfully I didn't have a train or anything like that, but still I was just taking it one step at a time. And and folks stood up. Mm -hmm. Like I remember seeing folks stand up and I, like it takes your breath away for a second when you get that kind of recognition from your peers, you know, and people whose work that you have respected for years and years and years. They stood up and said, like, kind of welcome. That, that was awesome. And in your speech, you talked about, you know, you can hear the people in St. Louis, you know, shouting and screaming for you. And you yeah. said specifically, like, Mama, I can hear you. Yeah. I want to know, when you talked to your mom, I'm sure it was that night, right? What did, what did she say to you? I didn't talk to her that night because my phone... Died. Died. <laughs> it got hit with so many different things at once, like texts, voicemails, like, you know, the computer part of it. Like, it didn't work until the next morning, where I had like 96, the 212 messages, something crazy. I had a <laughs> lot of different stuff. So I didn't talk to it till the next day, but my mom is classically low key. Congratulations. <laughs> I was like, thank you, mama. I appreciate that. She's like, how do you feel? I said, I feel good. You know, she's like, I can't. She said, this is amazing. I said, yeah, Ma, it is. It, it really is. So she was she was how I expected her to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, but when I talked to everybody else from St. Louis, like it was really cool to see that love. Because I think I could feel it. Yeah. I could feel that love from 1,800 miles away coming my way. Um, and I had to acknowledge where I'm coming from. And onto This Is Us, when, when I first heard what it was about, I'm like, that sounds really interesting, all these people born on the same day. Yeah. And then I watched it, and it was totally something other than what I thought. I kind of thought it would be like a sci-fi type of right, show. Right, right, right. And it was this really, really gripping family drama with great performances and fun twists and turns that keep people coming back. Sure. I kind of want to know, when you read the script, the pilot, for the first yeah. time, did you know right away that this would be huge? I knew it was something special. I remember telling Sarah Paulson, because I was auditioning for it while we were still shooting People vs. OJ, I said, I think I found what I want to do next. Mm. You know, and she said, really? I was like, yeah. She said, go get it. <laughs> right? Because I had so many people saying, like, don't do anything until the show comes out. Like the first six episodes. Even Brad Simpson said, don't, I don't want you to do anything. Pick another job until the first six episodes comes out. I was like, all right, but I already booked this pilot, so I can't really do anything now. But it was, it was a no-brainer. 
Like it, it leaps off of the page. Dan Fogelman is a genius. Mm -hmm. And he makes you laugh out loud and he makes you weep while you're sitting down at your desk. So I felt as if, if I had that experience just reading this, hopefully when people actually see it, they'll have a similar response. And the Emmys loved it. It got a ton of nominations, yeah. including Best Drama Series. Yeah. And for and you are actually up against your TV dad in the yeah. same category, you and Milo. Yes. Are you guys going to duke it out? How are you going to take him down? It's the eighth time in history, and I know this because <laughs> I read Gold Derby. Yes. It's like you and True Detective and yeah. NYPD Blue. NYPD Blue, ER. West Wing. West Wing. Those are some good shows. Those are decent. They're solid. They're yeah. solid shows. Uh, we're not duking it up. We, you know what's so amazing, too, is that we have two storylines that don't intersect at right. all, but that the writing was strong enough to support both of us getting a nomination in the lead actor category. It's a testimony to Fogelman and our writers that they give something for everyone to do. Mm -hmm. You know, because oftentimes you can show up and you may have a, a little side salad or whatnot, and it's tasty, but it doesn't fill you up. We get meat and potatoes week in and week out, mm -hmm. and that's a testimony to our writers. So, the only thing that we say is like we're up against you know Kaiser Soze and Hannibal Lecter, so yeah. we're just happy to be invited to the party. <laughs> I hope you take everyone down. Uh, <laughs> your your other TV dad is also nominated, yes, Ron yes. Cephas Jones. Yes, and you had a lot of scenes with Ron, particularly yeah. in, in the Memphis episode. What was it like, just? To, to know that he was nominated after years and years of working that he gets the bid. That was the best part of the day. Yeah. Because I, I got a lot of phone calls and people were congratulating me and I was saying thank you, but my phone call to Ron, um, his joy is unbridled. And, and Ron curses up a blue streak, but <laughs> he does it in such a joyful manner. And like, I don't know if, I, I won't do it for, for our audience or not, but he'll be like, yeah, son, I, I'm so happy about this shit. <laughs> like, he gets so amped up about the whole thing it. that I just start crying. So I was really, really happy for him because I didn't know what his involvement with the show would be moving forward. I knew that he would be involved, but probably not to the same extent that he was in season one. Mm -hmm. So for him to get that recognition, um, I was happy. Yeah, very well deserved. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed a couple months ago, looking through the best actor category, yeah. is that Andre Brower was the was the last black actor to win. This was nineteen years ago for Homicide. Yeah, man. So, and I know you're a fan fan of Andre. How, how could you not be? How can you? What 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 would it be? What would it mean to you just follow in his footsteps? Andre Brower is a Stanford man, as is Sterling K. Brown. Andre Brower is married to a woman who went to grad school at NYU, as is Sterling K. Brown. I did not know I was following the formula to get a nomination as an African-American male for the best lead actor in a drama series, <laughs> but clearly there's something to it. He's tremendous. He came and spoke to us when we were still in grad school at NYU, and I, like his portrayal in Glory was still really fresh in my head, and the raw emotion that he brought to that performance. And he talks about how Michael Beach taught him how to act for the camera, because at Juilliard and at NYU, there's not a lot of camera classes. It's for the stage. Mm -hmm. And so there's a slow transition and learning curve to take theatrical truth and turn it into cinematic truth. Um, I think he's absolutely phenomenal. To see what he's doing on Brooklyn Nine-Nine right now, like he's killing the game in a whole new way. If I can have a career like Dre Brower's, I'd be doing all right. <laughs> um, the episode you submitted to the Emmys is, of course, Memphis. Yeah. Uh, did you first of all before we talk about Memphis? Were you considering any others, or was that just the one that you knew? I about? considered Jack Pearson's son, mm -hmm. for sure, because I, I really love the relationship between Kevin and Randall, and that um, dealing with Randall's anxiety and the breakdown that he had in the office. Um, it was powerful to portray because it was physically exhausting, like inhabiting a space of somebody who was sort of imploding on themselves. And then when the audience saw it and the response that I got from other people who suffer from anxiety and saying how they felt as if they hadn't seen it in that way, but they were very thankful for it. I was, it was six in one hand, half a dozen in the other, but I felt like Memphis as a whole is just 
one of those powerful episodes of television that people remember, like the way yeah. in which I remember Battle of the Bastards or, <laughs> you know, Love's Labor's Lost for episode of ER from back in the day. Like, I feel like Memphis may occupy that space for people at some time in the future. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It was also a great episode for Ron, and that was his episode of submission too, right? Yeah. And and Brian Tyree Henry, your your buddy in real life. Yeah, man. Talk about working with Brian, dude. <laughs> so Brian comes on to the show, and he says, "Brown, um, I think I just swagger jacked your show." I was <laughs> like, "Did you really?" He's like, "Yeah, man. I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but I think I just swagger jacked your show." And so we only get one scene. Because most of his work is in the past with Jamel, who mm -hmm. plays young William. Um, but it's so much fun to go into that scene, to recognize him as being my family, because he is my family. And the enthusiasm that Sterling has for being in a scene with Brian is what Randall has for being in something with Cousin Ricky. So it was awesome. Like, it wasn't enough. Um, and I believe that there are possible hopes of Cousin Ricky coming back. Ooh. Right, get a little tea. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's awesome because we we speak the same language as actors. We kind of work in a very similar way. So anytime I get a chance to spend with him, it's awesome. And the fact that he got nominated also made me very very happy. Yeah. I mean, when I, every time I hear that man sing that song, I get goosebumps. It's dope. Do you have a favorite Randall moment for <clears throat> for all of season one? Because my favorite was actually the moment where you found out that your dad had a male lover. <laughs> and your reaction, or Randall's reaction was just like, wait, what? It was such a funny little moment that I just love. What, what about you? What was your favorite, Randall? I like that moment. I, you know, I, I think about some of the lighter moments, like when he meets Cousin Ricky, he's like, wait, you my cousin? Um, <laughs> I enjoy, like, the sort of goofiness that he has, in particular when he goes to the career day for his daughter and he writes a song about what he does for a living, uh, it just tickles me. Like, when I watch it, I'm like, you're a damn fool, Randall, but, you know, you try so hard, and God bless you for it. So that's, that's probably one that I really enjoy. There's heavier moments. There's so many heavy moments that sometimes I just hold on to the lightness of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you, you, you kind of tease a little bit about season two. Is there anything else you can give us a little hint about what's going to happen? Yep. So you'll find out how Jack dies. That's one. You'll learn something in 201, the first episode, and then like the details will get filled in throughout the course of the season. Uh, Randall and Beth are looking to adopt, but they don't necessarily see eye to eye on how to proceed with that adoption. Mm -hmm. Um... Kate is looking to begin a singing career, um, which she treads into slowly, um, but hopefully something shall come of it. And it also forges a very interesting relationship between Rebecca and her, because mothers and daughters can have somewhat fractious relationships sometimes, especially mothers and daughters who both fancy themselves chanteuses. I think that's what we <laughs> Um, and then I'm actually really delighted, and maybe, maybe I'm most delighted by Kevin's storyline. Hmm. And I'm, for two reasons. Number one, Justin doesn't get the credit he deserves, because Justin's great. I feel like because he's handsome and just debonair and whatnot, like people think that he's just eye candy, but he, he puts in work, mm -hmm. like great work. And so the storyline that he has with regards to having uh, Sophie back in his life, but also having a, kind of like a second start on his film acting career and trying to find the balance there, something I can understand quite intimately, being married and having children and making sure that everybody gets the attention that they deserve, um, takes on some very interesting complications as we move forward in the season. So I'm excited about that. And then you got Jack and Rebecca, who we pick up the day after they decide to spend the night apart. I don't even know if I want to call it a separation, but mm -hmm. you know, they took a small little break. And you see how these people, if they can, how they can make their way back to each other. It's marriage, man. Like it's mm -hmm. as a married man, you know, better or worse, sickness and health till death do you part. You try to honor that vow and then you hit something that you don't know if you can make it through, and then you decide, God willing, that you can make it. And this is where we get a chance to watch 
Jack and Rebecca do this season. Are you guys going to make America cry again? Because you made us cry quite a bit in season one. Probably. I mean, it's not my intention. I don't even know if it's Dan's. Yeah, it's probably Dan's intention. He likes making people cry. But I, I, more than just the tears in and of themselves, it's the idea of putting a show out there that wants people to connect with one another. Because things have been so divisive, politically speaking, um, that it's nice to have something that makes people want to come together. If in that coming together you happen to shed a tear or two, mm -hmm. sorry about that, but yeah, it's worth it. Well, final question here, Mr. Yeah. Brown. You are also getting some Oscar buzz. I don't want to jinx anything, but for your new movie, Marshall, is there anything... I haven't actually seen the trailer yet. Is there anything you could tell us about, <clears throat> about this upcoming film? Marshall follows a young Thurgood Marshall, uh, I think it's 1941, we're in Connecticut. He is the sole lawyer for the NAACP. He goes around the country looking to defend African Americans that he feels are falsely accused of whatever crime they're accused of. So we're in Connecticut, this guy Joseph Spell is accused of the rape and attempted homicide of Eleanor Strubing, played by Kate Hudson. Becomes sort of a he said, she said, she's saying one thing, Joseph's saying another thing, the truth lies somewhere in there. And Marshall and his partner in crime, in this particular instance, a lawyer by the name of Sam Friedman, played by Josh Gad, are trying this case and trying to figure out what the truth is. Uh, I think it's a really interesting story. We know that he's the first African-American Supreme Court Justice we know about Brown versus the Board of Education, but we didn't know that he was going back and forth throughout this country looking to give the best defense possible to these African-American men and women that may not have had counsel otherwise of that caliber. So I'm ready for America to see it. It's been mm -hmm. a long time. Let's get it out there. I hope they enjoy it. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, man. And best of luck at the Emmys. You're an old pro now. You're, you're a former winner. Thank you very much, yeah. man. Appreciate you got it. it.